Arizona, land of cowboys and Indians, of canyons and cacti, wild west towns and natural wonders, land of red rocks, red rock country. Each day, the light of the sun brings out the bold and exciting colors of these bizarre red rock formations. In the 1940s, 24 white people lived here, along with a tribe of Hopi Indians. Today, the Hopis live in a nearby reservation, which they manage themselves. Hopi country was an arid highland desert plateau in which hardly anyone could survive apart from the tough Native American Indians. The desert appears to be uninhabited by day because three quarters of those who live here only venture outside at sundown. For many years, the North American Red Heart Territory was used only as an Indian reservation. But today, the southwest of the USA has become a magnificent national park. When the word Indian is mentioned, the noble Redskins comes to mind, who, with eagle feathers in their hair, rode mustangs across the endless prairie. However, this romantic notion is far from reality. The word Indian has been misconstrued because Columbus did not land in India, but in North America. In 1512, Pope Julius II declared that the Indians of the New World were true descendants of Adam and Eve, and so derived from the Garden of Eden. Sixty million years ago, movement of the continental shelf lifted the Colorado Plateau and caused wind and erosion to form these unique shapes. A thousand years ago, the highly cultured Anasazi and Hohokam Indians lived here, planting maize and vegetables in the meager valleys and building walled towns into the cliffs of the canyons. Montezuma Castle is one of the best maintained settlements. In 200 BC, these newly developed cultures brought new life to these arid regions by the introduction of irrigation systems for cultivation of the land. At this time, Navajo Indian mythology included stories about the so-called Anasazi, or those who were here before us. They used 
used the natural environment. Protected caves in natural rock walls, which were accessible only by simple wooden ladders. With these, unwanted visitors were kept out. From about 500 AD, the Anasazi began to construct cliff buildings from loam, with roofs containing wooden beams covered with a layer of earth. The two crucial factors which dominated the life of the Indians were the climatic conditions and the land. They had to adapt themselves to their environment. Knowledge of weather patterns as well as the flora and fauna was vital and characterized their way of life. The earth was the mother, the heavens the father. All their religious ceremonies focused on rain. For the Native American Indian, prayer and due observation of the stars were elementary requirements. This museum offers many interesting insights into their way of life. A colorful array of different varieties of stone animals, clothing, jewellery and domestic objects. Models and drawings illustrate the construction and layout of the living rooms. But here, poisonous snakes and spiders were equally at home. Following a 20-year drought, in 1280, the Anasazi suddenly vacated their cliff dwellings and, leaving no trace, completely disappeared. For a hundred years, scientists from all over the world have investigated evidence that a gigantic meteorite crashed here, leaving behind it a huge crater, the Meteor Crater. It's believed that around 20,000 years ago, a massive orbiting rock smashed into the Earth at this point and, from the energy created by impact, exploded and totally disintegrated. There are no more than about 30 meteorite craters on our planet. As the central and inner wall of the crater is similar to the landscape of the Moon, preparation and training for the Apollo space missions took place here, this obviated the need for artificial test surfaces and meant that the astronauts could carry out their training in natural surroundings. Consequently, the human race has become aware of a very real cosmic danger. The fact that our planet is constantly exposed to bombardment from meteorites.
Discovered in 1871, the crater's immense basin descends to a depth of 175 meters and has a diameter of 1,265 meters. The actual size of the cosmic object which landed here will probably never be known. Within an area of 160 kilometers, all life was totally destroyed. Located in northwest Arizona is the 378 square kilometer national park, the so-called Petrified Forest. The surrounding colorful desert shimmers in all the colors of the rainbow. The sand's mineral content mainly consists of volcanic ash. The color of the sand indicates metal deposits. It is thought that around 225 million years ago, this was a swampland surrounded by high-reaching valleys. Rivers transported dead trees and animal carcasses in volcanic, ash-enriched mud until the water evaporated and the rivers dried up. The trees then lay in a vacuum in the mud. Silicon dioxide was forced into the rotting wood and reached such a high concentration that it crystallized into quartz. Thus, fossilized trees were created. Iron oxide and other minerals produced colorful variations which sometimes surfaced above the Earth's crust. But most of the trees remain buried up to 90 meters deep.
Even the age rings on the fossilized trees are recognizable. Wind and weather ensured that pebble shells, snails, fish, amphibians and reptiles were also exposed. By law, it's forbidden to remove any of the National Park's natural treasures, large or small. This even includes a handful of sand. Park rangers keep a watchful eye. A favourite photoshop is the Agate Bridge. Formed like a bridge, it's a huge fossilised tree trunk which spans 12 metres wide across a gorge. Many believe that the Canyon de Shelley is the most beautiful in Canyon land. Although not as famous as its big brother in the northwest, it's certainly of equal beauty. Within today's Navajo Indian Reservation, Two wild and spectacularly jagged gorges are the protected religious sanctuaries of the Native American tribes. Between 300 meter rock walls, the picturesque Rio de Shelley splashes peacefully along, on the shores of which, for centuries, apricot and peach trees have blossomed. In their cultural heyday around 1,000 years ago, the Anasazi built their living quarters into the rock walls of the canyon. And from here also, the canyon's inhabitants suddenly departed. Likewise to the settlements of Mese Verde and Montezuma Castle. To all who see it, the precipitous rock walls of the 50 meter long and 300 meter deep canyon seem gigantic. The Navajo Territory is the largest Indian reservation in the United States and with a population of nearly 200,000 is one of the most highly populated in the USA. This idyll in total, no man's land, has been witness to several conflicts.
Next to some ruined cliff dwellings, these rock paintings are of special significance. They depict riders with dogs and again and again circles. The most important dwellings can only be identified from the edge of the canyon. The White House, the Antelope House and the Mummy Cave. The Navajos still endeavor to live according to their old traditions. The Takin ruins are also situated in the Navajo Indian Reservation. These are the ruins of the historical dwellings which were carved into the rock by their original inhabitants. Ruins of a Pueblo from the 13th century BC. Again, these fortresses could only be entered by steep ladders through their skylights. In the visitor center, the museum offers a good insight into the life of the prehistoric Pueblo cultures of North America. Old rituals, such as religious sun dance and hundreds of ceremonial rules were passed verbally from one generation to the next. There are stone drawings of dogs and also extraterrestrial images which remain a mystery to this day. Unfortunately, there are no written records of these early times. On the border between Arizona and Utah, Western films and advertisements have made the massive monoliths and table mountains of the desert valleys world famous. The stone backdrop of the Wild West, Monument Valley. Wild West fans will instantly recognize Monument Valley, 
Between these colossal 300 meter tall monoliths and sky-high rocky needles, John Wayne and countless other screen heroes fought off Indians and battled with baddies. Just as with the Native American Indians of old, the horse still provides the park ranger with a good view over the wide plains of the rocky plateau. The Navajo Indians live on a wild and rugged terrain. More than 200 million years ago, this region was covered by ocean, on the bed of which were deep deposits of mud. These deposits turned into slate, and as the seabed rose again, the water drained away and cracks and fissures were formed, and a vast sandstone plain was created. In the heart of the Navajo Indian Reservation, with its magical rock formations which, in the evening sun, glow red, it's easy to understand why nature played such an important part in the lives of its native inhabitants. A sacred atmosphere can be felt everywhere, and the existence of ghosts is suddenly imaginable. Red sand forms the fantastic shapes of the dunes, their impressive patterns created by the desert wind. It is the foundation of this sea of sand from which these high sandstone towers rise up. Originally domiciled in Alaska, on their journey south at the beginning of the 14th century, the Navajo settled here, bringing with them sheep and goats. American geologists regard these rock formations as natural monuments which have withstood erosion. These are often taller than their width and resemble huge buildings. It doesn't take a lot of imagination to recognize pillars, towers, chimneys, skyscrapers, castles and even temples in the natural rock formations.
Many of these natural monuments are nearly 300 meters tall. The sandstone has a cap of resistant rock, which helps to slow down the erosion process. These rock formations are surrounded by the sandstone debris, which frequently crumbles away from them. Erosion continues until nothing remains. Multifarious shapes inspire a variety of fantastic names. Castle Rock is the most impressive, crowned by battlements as well as bridges and totem poles. In 1923, the magic attraction of this place impressed businessman Harry Golding, so much so that he settled here and established a trading post. Fifteen years later, he drew Hollywood's attention to this unique landscape. And with it, the true significance of the Wild West was born. The wide open land. At a length of 290 kilometers, Lake Powell is the second largest and most impressive man-made lake in the USA. This large artificial lake can be explored by pleasure boat. Around the lake's 3,200 kilometer shoreline, there are several marinas from which a variety of boats embark. In 1964, the Glen Canyon Dam was completed, and upriver from the Grand Canyon, it took 17 years to dam the Colorado River. Simultaneously, the numerous small canyons flowed with water. A labyrinth of bays and flooded gorges were formed. Large red rocks protrude like strange islands from the confined mass of water. In this area, commercial boat owners are not required to have a boat license or any other form of license. Here, freedom seems to have no bounds. Around 41 trillion litres of water accumulated here until the lake reached its final level. Each year, the force of the water generates 1,200 megawatts of electricity.
Slowly, the boat moves through a labyrinth of thousands of tributaries, which, like the finely divided sections of a leaf, flow into the smallest gorges. The contours of the surrounding desert mountains reflect onto the surface of the deep blue water, creating an uncanny contrast with the flooded canyon landscape. When the last rays of sun shine down onto Lake Powell's turquoise blue surface, the red rocks seem as though they have only just now emerged from the water. Nature itself has created some bizarre and artistic shapes. A sculpture formed from undulating waves of stone, the Antelope Canyon. From the surface, a gaping crevice is the only means of access, tempting the curious to enter. Unassisted by mankind, Erosion has created a natural labyrinth. The palette of colour teases the eye, from the apricot hues of fine textured sand to various dark layers of stone, the rusty red colours being the result of oxidation. As if filtered through the stone, light shines faintly through a crevice. Flickering yellow, it spreads out a hundredfold and creates patterns on the walls which change with every turn. For thousands of years, the water in Antelope Creek has eaten into the caves and crevices of fossilized sand dunes. Here, most of the ghost riverbed is covered with sand. Little water flows here. Like a vertical mouth with red-brown stone lips, or a 30-meter-high keyhole, the rocks open up and lead into the awe-inspiring semi-darkness of the impressive cave formations. The 
shapes and colors created by erosion unite into abstract patterns. Here, nature has created a fantastic world of towers, caves, entrances, and shimmering rock surfaces. The walls feel smooth and grainy, and occasionally sand. Home of the wind is how the Navajo Indians describe the mysterious canyon, this place of power, a fossilized hallucination. Sixteen hundred meters deep and about sixteen kilometers long. The most colossal gorge in the world. The Grand Canyon. The site of this gigantic natural wonder is the climax of any trip to Arizona. Each year, around five million visitors come to see this, the eighth wonder of the world. Thirty-five million years ago, Massive subterranean forces created the Rocky Mountains and at the same time the high and extensive Kebab Plateau. About 10 million years ago, erosion caused huge masses of stone to cut deep into the landscape and thus the river system of the Colorado River gradually sprang to life. Deep below, the blue-green shimmering river winds snake-like through the seemingly never-ending crevice. On the steep banks of the Colorado River, at the foot of the canyon, a thousand years ago, the Hopi Indians grazed their herds. They felt safe here. The unrestrained elemental forces of rain, wind, snow and severe extremes of temperature weathered the canyon walls and widened the gorge and also made it increasingly deeper. The various colored layers of mineral deposits do much to reveal the geological history of the region. But the relatively recent past of dinosaurs and mammals is not so clear. The feeling of immortality shines out in the Grand Canyon. In the morning, above the gorge hangs a golden mist which slowly ascends like a silk cloth raised by an unseen hand. At midday, the scorching sun shines vertically into the narrowest of crevices and searches out the slightest possibility of shade. The colors of the stone layers alter at different times of the day.
and in the evening, into the fading sky, the rock walls cast back the light which they greedily soaked up during the day. At Grand Canyon, eternity has turned to stone. As the first white men to arrive at the edge of this monumental gorge in 1540, the Spanish conquistadors came here in search of gold. Terrified, they thought they had seen the entrance to hell. With nine men and four boats, the discoverer, John Wesley Powell, journeyed on the Colorado and, risking all, successfully crossed the Grand Canyon. The view from the edge of the canyon down to the river is like peering into the history of the earth. The steady process of erosion continues and the canyon grows forever deeper. In 1771, the first white person stepped foot in the gorge, the Franciscan monk Francisco Garces, and due to the red hue of the river at that time, named it Colorado, the colored. Two of the most hard-working builders have joined forces, time and the river. This land of grand, natural wonders and amazing adventure has always fascinated those who have experienced it. One can almost hear the command, go west, while imagining arriving here by wagon train in the true pioneering spirit of this huge and majestic country. <laughs> 